Hi folks, today we're going to be covering one of my favorite topics, that oh so scary and crazy world of colored media to get you out of those black and white ruts, those kinds that only a pencil or charcoal can really get you into, and they're actually quite similar, they're pastels. We're going to go over the top three things of each of the different types of pastels that you can choose from to make sure that you have the right ideas and concepts and know the pros and cons of each so you can choose the right pastel for you. Stick with me, we'll be right back. So if you're feeling stale or, you know, a lot of people just draw, like I did, you have a lot of black and white drawings, it gets, it gets a little old, especially if you've been doing it for years. If you're looking to further your work into the color media, Pastels would be the perfect place to start, as far as I'm concerned. They capture ideas super quickly. Throughout history, they're one of the biggest things artists have used to express their ideas and just capture things super quick. Okay, so right into it. The, the main three pastel types that there are are going to be one, soft, which is probably the most historical, the most widely used. The second is going to be hard pastels. And the third is going to be oil, which is more on the newer side, but a very, very good option as well. And I know a lot of good people that make a lot of awesome artwork using them. So the first are going to be soft pastels. They come in a bunch of different, um, uh, different, different brand names. There's probably the most popular is Rembrandt. There's uh, Schmincke, and there's also Senelier, which are the probably the top three brands out there that you want to look for and you can go to any art stores, any really, it really art stores, hobby stores, maybe more like uh, the local ones probably won't have as many on display or they'll be packaged for you to look through. So you can actually test and feel because you really want to be able to feel the difference with each one because there's the chalk pastels, they do have more of a chalky, um, a chalky texture but each one of the brands has their own uh, blend, their own mixture that makes each one very individual and different. The uh, Rembrandt pastels are more, they're a little harder. They're more like your traditional chalk. Soft pastels in general are gonna have three major characteristics. First one is they're all gonna be a lot more crumbly, just like your regular chalk. As soon as you put it down, it's gonna be dusty. They're not dusty as flying up in your face but they're gonna be crumbly across the paper and you're gonna if you want to have a nice clean line you're gonna want to go with what I'm gonna talk to you next with the harder pastels the second thing they use less binder in the mixing and in the creation process so they actually have a lot more vibrant color when you're using these so these the soft pastels are gonna get you that the super vibrant colors that just really pop off the page and third, one of the things that makes pastels so awesome is that they cover a lot of area very quickly. You can put them on the side, do big wipes and cross. If you're coming from pen regular pencils, that can be a very welcome relief, especially if you're doing a lot of tedious line work with your black and white drawings, which I used to be doing. And once I got to the soft pastels, it opened up an entire an entire world of possibilities. I created more work in a day than I had in the past three months. A lot of opportunity going around with the soft pastels and I can't recommend them highly enough if you're looking to further your work into color media. Okay, so the second type of pastel, so we had three, the second type of pastel is gonna be a hard pastel and if you can look at if you can see that they're not usually round uh, some of them are round these are actually from Prismacolor they're the new pastels and you pastel they're a little they're square and you can sharpen these if you can see the tip on that you can sharpen these to a really fine point and you can draw in those details that you really can't get if you're using one of those traditional soft pastels. And let me, uh, let me just pull one of these up here. And if you look at them side by side, you can see the difference. One is, it's almost like a french fry, this one. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually almost the same size as a french fry. And these are more, uh, you know, I don't really, it, it's just a bigger, rounder type. I don't know 
exactly what that would relate to. The difference with some of these, like these, like the Schmincke, these are super buttery. They're, when you put them on there, it's gonna be thick. You might even have a layer on the paper. These, not so much. These are gonna be like drawing with a hard piece of chalk. That's what it really is. And then which you can get those super fine details and you can do a lot more refined work with the hard pastels. They also come in a pencil form, which is really good for those detailed work and it's a lot cleaner. You don't get your fingers all stained up with chalk dust. They have a nice little bundle of them right here. They look almost just like colored pencils, except they're chalky. They sharpen just like colored pencils. They can be a little crumbly, just like uh, regular colored pencils can be crumbly as well. So you wanna make sure you don't drop these or you wanna make sure they're they're taken care of pretty well, or when you go to sharpen them, they're just gonna crumble and a point will break. So you wanna make sure you take real good care of these types. Really, pastels in general are all gonna be very kind of fragile. So you wanna take care of them, keep them in a nice area. I actually went to Goodwill, and if you can see that, I got like a little, uh, little party dish, a little Tupperware party dish. Those work perfect. You can just spin them around if you need to, pick a color, throw it back. Just divide it up like a color wheel. It's pretty awesome, actually. You can just grab whatever one you need and it's there. And last but not least, the third type of pastel that there is is gonna be the oil pastel. Oil pastels are a little bit too, uh, they're a little bit newer and they are gonna use the same pigments as uh, in the traditional soft pastels, but they're gonna be binded using an oil soluble binder which gives it that painterly it's almost like a painterly look so it looks almost if you see it from far away it looks like oil paint the chalk pastels are going to be a lot easier to blend you could blend them you have to be actually careful with that because you can blend them with your finger accidentally super easy if you just take a piece of chalk and you see how easy it blends on a chalkboard or anything like that exactly what you're gonna get with the soft pastels. Oil pastels, not so much. You're gonna have to put a little bit of elbow grease into them to get them to blend together. And you might have to layer them a little different just to get those different colors you're needing. All in all, oil pastels, really great. Probably not what you wanna start off with, start off with if you're kinda new to color media or the pastel game in general. So I hope that gave you a pretty good overview of the different types of pastels out there and which ones might be right for you, but you always wanna go down and test them out first for yourself. Um, don't, just take, don't just take my word for it. Go actually test them out at the stores. A lot of them will let you do that. They'll have little tester, little pieces of paper you can go test on. Test them out, see which one's right for you. If the one's too buttery, one's too soft. You know, they all have their own different characteristics. So go test them out first and you'll, you'll really get a feel of which one is the right one for you. There's also a list, a link to all of the brands that I listed in, that I talked about in this video, as well as some other ones that are a little more expensive that you might wanna check out if you are a little more advanced. So I hope that served you. I hope that uh, you take those few tips, apply them. Let me know what you think. Put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.